spiritual authority and covering spiritual authority and covering i may do my best to try to finish the message but if i am not able please i would like you to go on our facebook and then you'll be able to get a complete message from our page amen can you say amen it was last night the Lord said to me, teach my people this word. And I'm doing just that. And I sincerely believe that the Lord will bless you through it in Jesus' name. What is spiritual authority and covering? Spiritual authority and covering simply means the place of spiritual ability, sensitivity that engenders the following. Revelation. Instruction, intersection, divine intervention, and protection. When you say someone is a spiritual authority and a spiritual covering over a people or over a family, it simply means that the person has spiritual ability and the person also is sensitive to things that happens spiritually. In other words, the person has spiritual insight. The person is not just a novice when it comes to spiritual affairs. That is why as children of God, God expects us to be people who are whole, people who are strong spiritually. The reason for it is because we live in a world that the Bible said our wrestle is not against flesh and what? And blood. That's why Ephesians admonish us that we should be strong in who? In the Lord. How do you know a believer who is spiritually able or who is spiritually strong and sensitive? That believer we enjoy divine revelation. That's why the Bible said things that eyes cannot see, the things that your ears cannot hear. The things that your mind can't even con conceive, he has revealed them to us by his spirit. So when you are someone who is a spiritual authority and covering over your family, over your children, over your spouse, you are that person who will know things that is beyond what the natural human being or the natural man will know. You will also enjoy divine instructions. We're going to see that as we move on. You will know things that God wants you to do. That is why I'm sure you heard a testimony some time ago of a sister who was under a silly friend that was walking and then she heard a voice. The Lord said to her, leave. As she stepped away, a few seconds after she stepped away from the, the silly friend, the friend pulled down. Who could have told her that if not for the unknowing God? Lift up your right hand. I pray that from today, you will enjoy divine instruction. Yeah. Divine instruction is what Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. And they will happen and they follow me. And then you will be someone who can pray for others. You know what the mind of God is and you intercede for others. So you will be an intercessor for your family. You'll be an intercessor for your husband. You'll be an intercessor for your wife. You'll be an intercessor for your family. And by that, your family will enjoy divine protection. Are you there? Divine intervention rather. God can intervene on behalf of your family because you are a spiritual authority and covering over the family. Amen. In Luke 11, 21 to 22, the Good News Bible, he said, when a strong man, who? Oh, please talk back to me. Who? When a strong man with all his weapons ready, what? Guide his own house, all his belongings are safe. Who is that strong man? That strong man referred to in that passage is a man who is a spiritual authority and who has a spiritual covering or who is a spiritual covering over his or her family. Are you still there? Now let's quickly look at where spiritual authority and covering is needed. Where do we need spiritual authority and covering? We need spiritual covering, uh, spiritual authority and covering in the family. Your family need to enjoy your spiritual authority and covering as a father, as a mother. In the family unit, 
We need spiritual authority and covering. Don't forget, they said, when a, a strong man guides his house, his goods are safe. So you as a father, you as a mother, you ought to be a spiritual authority and covering over your family. In Matthew 2, 14, uh, 13 to 14, we saw how Joseph was a spiritual covering over his family. The Bible said the Lord appeared to Joseph and told Joseph, Get up! Take the child, take the mother, and escape to Egypt. Why? Because Herod, the enemy of this child, we seek to kill this child. Imagine if Joseph was not spiritually sensitive. Death would have come to the family. The family would have been attacked. Do you know there are things that happens in, in the life or to an individual or in a family that could have been avoided if there was someone who is a spiritual authority and covering. If you believe that, say amen. And to be a spiritual authority and covering over your family, you don't need a title. All you need is a relationship with Jesus and be steadfast in the pursuit of your spiritual well-being so that you become spiritually strong. The Bible said the Lord appeared to Joseph and told Joseph what to do and that averted a tragedy. The question you and I should ask ourselves today is, am I a spiritual authority and a spiritual covering over my family? Do I have what it takes to be a person who guides my house, who guides my household, so that the one who came to kill, to steal, and to destroy will not have a place? Lift up your right hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, from today, you will be stirred up to spiritual hunger that will enable you to become spiritually strong to provide spiritual leadership in your family in Jesus' name. The Bible told us that in verse number 14 of Matthew 2, so Joseph got up, took the child and his mother during what time? The night and left for Egypt. There are times God is asking you to pray. God, is, God will never ask you to do a thing that is not profitable. Whatever God tells you to do, he has a reason for it. You cannot be wiser than him. Imagine if Joseph had said, I'm tired, I don't understand all of this trouble. Joseph, even himself would have been killed. The wife would have been killed. But as a spiritual authority and covering, he escaped with the wife and the son. Can I pray for someone today? In the name of Jesus Christ, nothing evil will take you on our ways anymore. Amen. We have another account in Matthew 13, 24 to 25. We saw how the Bible said there was a man who sowed good seed in his feet. And everybody in the house went to sleep. And the enemy came and planted weed. Do you know how terrible it is that in a family there is no intercessor? In a family there is nobody who is spiritually sensitive? Why was the enemy able to sow seed or sow wheat rather into the soil where the man planted the good seed because everyone was what? Asleep. Everyone asleep, that means everyone was spiritually sensitive. Do you know at times, you know, people celebrate their wedding ceremony, you know, everyone rejoices with them, but because they are not spiritually strong and sensitive, before you know, the enemy will sow discord, the enemy will sow hatred. The woman you saw and you said, You are the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh, you are now saying, You are a bone of my throat. Now, that wasn't what God intended for the marriage. But someone came, an enemy, who is the enemy? The devil came and sowed what? Weed. What is the whole essence of sowing a weed? What is the objective of sowing a weed? A weed is intended to hinder. A weed is intended to corrupt. A weed is intended to spoil. Lift up your right. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever the enemy may have planted, maybe at a time where you were not spiritually sensitive, Jesus said, every tree that is not planted by my father shall be uprooted. I uproot it now in the name of Jesus. I'll put hatred out of your family. I'll put every spirit of anger from your family. I'll put every spirit of disunity from your home front. So where is spiritual authority and covering needed? In the church. Where? In the church. 
The church is a place of spiritual authority and is a place of spiritual covering. There are things that the devil wants to attack you, but he cannot prosper because you are part of a spiritual family. You are part of the family of God. Can you say amen? amen. A family that prays for you, a family that watches over you. Every church is a place of spiritual authority. And anyone who is truly committed and connected, we enjoy spiritual authority and enjoy spiritual covering. Do you know that each time you come to church and prayers are being made and you are saying amen, something is happening to you? Whoever we appear or go anywhere to try to speak evil over you, it shall not prosper. You remember when the children of Israel were on their way to, to Cana? The Bible said a certain king by the name Balak hired another basleading prophet and said he should pronounce a curse over the Israelites. And the Bible says an altar were made, sacrifices were put on that altar, and Balaam stood by the, by the sacrifice with the intention to pronounce a curse over the Israelites. What happened? God stepped in. Instead of cursing the Israelite, he began to bless the Israelite. And the man who brought him to curse Israel said, I didn't bring you here to bless them. I brought you here to curse them. And the bastarding prophet who lost money more than God's people said, I cannot curse those whom God has not cursed. I cannot curse those whom God has blessed. Lift up your right hand. Say an amen to this like you are the only one here. In the name of Jesus, as you declare that amen to this prayer, so shall it be. I declare this over you. Whoever curse you is cursed. Anyone that pronounce evil over your life, over your marriage, over your spouse, over your children, I stand on this altar to declare this with authority in the name of Jesus. It shall not stand over you. So the church is a place that provides you or who, that stands as a spiritual authority and as a spiritual covering for you. That is why Hebrews 13 verse number 17 told us this. Apostle Paul was admonishing the church. He said, obey your leaders. Be willing to do what they say. Why? They are responsible for your spiritual welfare. So they are always watching to protect you. Obey them so that their work will give them joy, not grief. It would help you to make it hard for them. Now, in case you don't understand, let's look at how the, uh, the Good News Version put it. Can we read it together if you can see this slide? Want to go? Obey your leaders and follow their orders. Their orders is not to tell you to do things outside the word of God. Let's fast. Let's pray. In the book of Joel, he said, proclaim a fast. Let the prophet uh, blow the trumpet and proclaim a fast. That was God calling his people, calling them to a spiritual exercise, calling them to a place of spiritual authority and spiritual covering. So when you are part of a church and the spiritual authority there gives an instruction, he said, obey them. Why? Want to go. They watch over what? Your souls without resting. Without resting. Without resting. Since they must give God who? An account of their self. Do you know that if you are a spiritual leader over a church and you choose to leave, leave Kel you see, there are a lot of you here who cannot come and question my authority because you honor the authority of God. Am I right? But I am accountable to who? To God. When Saul was misbehaving, nobody could question him, but God took him to account. Spiritual authorities watch over your souls. And they are accountable to who? To God. Why? Because you are precious to God. Am I communicating? And that's why God will ask, you know, where is also person? And as a spiritual leader, by the grace of God, there are times after service, I'll be asking, are this is also person in church? Those I can see. Are this is also person in church? The reason is that as a shepherd, the well-being of your sheep is paramount. Am I communicating? He said you must obey them because they give account of their service and he went for that to say can you read if you obey them what happened they will do their work gladly if not they will do it with sadness and that will be of no help to you so when you are disobedient to church authority you are making their work difficult let's pray by seven you are coming by nine who are you are you a sheep or a goat because these two class or categories of people are in the church but it depends on who you are praise the lord jesus I said, praise the Lord Jesus. 
in John 17 verse number 12, Good News Bible, this, these are the words of Jesus. He said, why I was with them, his followers, I kept them safe by the power of your name. The name you gave me, I protected them. And not one of them was lost. Is that good news? Yes, Lift up your right hand. Everyone God has given to me by his grace as a spiritual authority and covering, none will be lost. Yeah. But Jesus was quick to say, except the man who was bound to be lost. Who was that man? Judah Iscariot. The one who was greedy. The one who would not listen. The one who will not obey. If I, when he kissed Jesus, Jesus said, wow, you betray your master with a kiss. He said, the one you give to me, I kept the, except the son of prediction. Except the one who had grown to a point where he would no longer listen. He is not willing to learn. He wants to serve me in his own way. That was the only one lost. Lift up your right hand. You will not be lost to the works of the enemy. John 10 verse number 28, Jesus speaking again, said, I give them eternal life. Who are those he gave eternal life? His followers. And they shall never perish. Shout him if you're in that list. And he went for that to say, no one will snatch them out of my hand. I'm telling you this. It was last night the Lord gave me this message. And I'm going to declare it according to what he asked me to pray and asked me to teach. I declare this. Nothing will snatch your husband away from you. Nothing will snatch your wife away from you. Nothing will snatch your children away from you. So the church is a place where you experience spiritual authority and covering. Amen. Amen. Another place where... Uh, where you experience or where spiritual authority and coverage is needed is in the community. Is it where? The community where you live. If you are spiritually heady and you are spiritually sensitive, God will tell you things about your neighborhood. He will show them to you. The Bible told us in Amos, it said God will do nothing except he first reveal it to his servant, the prophet. So when you are spiritually heady, God will tell you things about the neighborhood. He will tell you there are things in this neighborhood you need to time. Each time I've had the opportunity to go and lay the foundation of a house or dedicate a house, I prayed one prayer. Any power that reigns over this territory that is not of God, I bind you. Why? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness in high places. He said, devil, where are you from? He said, from moving to and fro, throughout the whole earth, looking for who to devour. So, have you not seen that there are certain environments or certain communities or certain places where a particular thing is always happening? A particular attitude is predominant in that environment. The children in that environment are always living in a wayward way. Lift up your two hands, but your children will not be part of that wayward lifestyle. Have you not also seen that in a particular community, most of the children that grew up in that area, they are on drugs. They smoke weed because there is a demon spirit that captures children and corrupt them and destroy them. So when you are spiritual, or when you are a spiritual authority and a spiritual covering over that community, you stand as an authority to say in this environment, you some demons have name. You powers that controls the destiny of children in this area. You can't find a place in my children's life. You pray that. Then you also pray for other people's children. Because you know what? If all the children in the neighborhood are evil and your only children are the only ones that are not evil, your children are not safe. So mature believers will not only pray for their children, they will also pray for the children of their loved ones. One day I told my wife, I said, some of our younger cousins, we need to see how we can extend help to them. I told her, I said, you know why? If we keep training only our children, training our children, training our children, training our children, <laughs> I'm telling you, in the near future, there will be a problem. Because these are people who we say we are relatives. And when you don't put them on the right track, you do your best. Some of them may not respond, but you just do your best. Listen to me, if you, are, you and your children are the only successful individuals or people in the family, you are not successful. Because it's only a matter of that they will plot your kidnapping. They will plot evil against you. So I told her, I said, there's a time that some of our younger cousins who are in school, let's think of what we can do for them so that they can find direct, am I communicating? Yes, if you say what is happening in an environment is not of your business, listen to me, as long as you live in that environment, you are going to experience what that evil is. So what are you supposed to do? As a mature believer, you take your stand and you tell yourself, praise the Lord Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus, every demonic power and authority that control the destiny of men, that makes women or guests to behave like prostitutes and they can't find a husband, they can't say their husband has, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. Amen. Amen. Are you still there? So you can become a spiritual authority and provide spiritual covering. Are you still with me? In a community. Let's see an example of that very quickly. I, I wish I'm not going to read this, but let's read together. Second Kings says 8 to 10. Now the king of Aram was what? Was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such a, a such and such a place. In other words, I'm going to set a trap to capture the king of Israel. See what I have over verse number nine. One to go. Can you read me if you can see it? Okay, one to go. What did he say? The man of God. Who? I'm surprised you are reading like that. What did it say? Sent what? To the king of Israel. Beware of passing that place because the Aramites are going down there. So the king of Israel check on the place indicated by the man of God time and time again. Elisha, are you for the time? And again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard against such places spiritual covering someone shall spiritual covering i told them before said he blesses this king there was a connection between the king and the man of god and that saved him from falling victim to the evil plot of the wicked so elisha was a spiritual authority that provided a spiritual covering to the king of israel he knew what the king of israel didn't know he was able to guide the king of israel uh, i pity a king who has no spiritual authority and spiritual covering if you are still there, say amen. amen. In an organization, spiritual covering is needed. Every organization needs spiritual covering. Because not many organizations are doing well. And one of the reasons why they are not doing well is not because there are no prospects or no potentials in that organization. But when you are in an organization where an evil power has held that organization bound, so much work leads you to no profit. So much energy. You go to work every day. Work from morning to evening. At the end of the year, nothing to show for it. Lift up your two ways. In the name of Jesus, every director or CEO or leaders of our organization here, I stand as a spiritual authority and cover you over organization from today. I release your organization to prosper. I release your organization to flourish. In Genesis 30 verse number 27, Jacob was an authority and a covering over the business of his uncle Laban. Hear what Laban said. Laban was an uncle to Jacob. He said, Laban said to him, that is to Jacob, what did he say? Please, let me say something. I know that the Lord has blessed me because of you. Can you lift up your right hand? Men who will help your organization go to the next level, God will send it to your organization. Then verse number eight, tell me what I should pay you. And I will give it to you. And I will give it to you. Blessed are you where you have people in your organization who are a spiritual authority in the light. If they are evil authority in darkness, they can also quench that. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? So the organization that you are part of, you pray for that organization. Some persons are part of organization. They are not happy with the organization. They are not living. The organization will not prosper. You will not also prosper. He said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. He said, for her prosperity is your prosperity. Am I communicating? So, in an organization, spiritual authority and covering is needed. Who provides spiritual authority and covering? If you are still part of this meeting, say amen. amen. Who provides spiritual authority and covering? One, parents. We saw in Matthew 2 verse number 14, how the Bible said, Joseph got up did what God asked him to do and he saved his wife and saved his children from tragedy. The evil plot against the family of Joseph was averted because Joseph was a spiritual authority and covering. Oh, my brothers and sisters, can I quickly say this to you? Blessed is a father who is spiritually strong, spiritually heady. Blessed is a mother who is spiritually heady and can watch over the destiny of the children. Imagine if Joseph was spiritually lukewarm she evil that would have come upon his family lift up your right hand today i pray for every parent may you become a spiritual authority and cover over your family who provides spiritual authority and covering children somebody say children if your father is spiritually sick 
Your mother is not spiritually healthy. They are not spiritually viable. The Bible said everyone in the house was sleeping and the enemy came and sowed weed and went away. And when they woke up from their slumber, they saw that the investment they have made has been corrupted. Ah! The owner of the farm or the owner of the investment said, so where did this come from? He said, an enemy did this. An enemy had done this. When? Everybody was sleeping. Spiritual slumberness. Spiritual deadness. You don't have an excuse. Your mother is not strong spiritually. Your father is not strong spiritually. You rise up and be a spiritual authority. In the book of Psalm 89, 19 to 20, David was called a warrior. Who was called a warrior? Why was he called a warrior? Because he was a spiritual authority and covering over the household of Jesus. He said, I have, I have found a young man, a warrior. I have raised a warrior. He said, with my sacred oil, I've anointed him. And he said, if you go further, he said, no enemy will subject him to tribute. In other words, he will be a spiritual authority and covering. Child of God, at this point, David was still in his father's house. So you don't have an excuse. You don't have a praying father. You don't have a praying mother. Don't blame them. Your prayer can revive them. Your prayer can keep them. Can you say amen? amen. Children can provide spiritual authority and covering. Who provides spiritual authority and covering? Ministers of God. Somebody say ministers of God. First Samuel 1 25. The Bible said, when the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli. Which boy? Samuel was handed over to prophet Eli. I told them in first service, imagine a prophet whom God had ordained to be the first prophet in, uh, in Israel was handed over to a drunkard. The destiny of the child will be corrupted. Do you know how many times growing up as a young man, there was this guy with the name Peter, and he was a very intelligent young man back then, you know, a little bit older than me. He was like a mentor to me because he was intelligent, and I, I, I gravitated to him. He taught me how to drink. He took me to a brutal and paid 50 naira for me. Are you following him? And I thought he was doing me a favor. And when I finished, I told him, thank you. Are you following him? I didn't know that he was on the path of destroying my life. He taught me how to drink alcohol. Imagine what had happened to the destiny of some children. Your child went to school and there's someone had jacked the destiny of the child. Introduced the child to a, to a court. A child that should have been a notable individual that will bring honor to the family. Do you know why baby Jesus was being sought after to be killed? Because the Bible said the three wise men went they came they said we have seen his star ah and hero said ah you must not shine as a star lift up your two hands i pray for every father and every mother here in the name of jesus christ whoever is having anything to do with your children or your child that is not of light i cut off their influence in the name of jesus i'm going to pray that prayer again anything that the enemy had deposited on your child a child who god gave to you as a blessing is suddenly becoming a burden bringing pain and sorrow going into all kinds of social vices today i declare that the destiny of that child be set free now in jesus name why was isaac a prophet somewhere why was he able to become what god destined his life for because the parents were wise, amen, to have handed over the child to Eli. And I'm sure Eli also handed over the child back to who? To God. And the Bible said, and Samuel grew up in the fear of God. Blessed is that child who has a godly influence. Blessed is that child. Blessed are those children who have godly influence. For the past two weeks, I've been spending time with the children. I can't tell you the awesome experience of what I'm having with the children. I can't tell you when I look at them. You know, after the first service, I went to pray for some of them who are from our sub branches. And as I was praying for them, I said, you guys should remember me when you get to your paradise. You know, listen to this very carefully, brothers and sisters. For those of us who are grown up as adults, we think we are the offer and the omega. Our season will so expire. And when our season expires, the next generation, our children. Listen to me, there are some of you, the devil don't even mind you too much. The only thing he wants to do with you is to distract you so that you will have time for your children. He knows that your future is in those children. He knows that your joy is in those children. So he has gone into their future to try to corrupt them so that they can bring... Have you not seen children kill their parents? But lift up your toe. Your children will not bring you sorrow. Samuel was handed over to Eli. As a minister of God, as a spiritual authority. And Samuel grew up under the atmosphere of godliness, godly influence. 
The evil that were going on in Israel couldn't get into Samuel because he was put under a godly authority. Can you say amen? amen. Who provides spiritual authority? Or provides spiritual authority and covering? Believers in Jesus Christ. Believers in who? In Jesus Christ. As a believer, you are a spiritual authority. You are a spiritual influence in your family. You don't need a title. All you need is a relationship with Jesus and a right standing and being firm and being committed. Then God can use you. God didn't say he's looking for a title. He said, I sought for who? For a man. Who will stand at the gap as an intercessor. And I will heal the land. And I will deliver the land. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you stand the, the, the place or you stand the chance to be a spiritual authority and covering to your family. In the book of Colossians, verse number 12, Epaphras, who is one of you? A servant of Christ Jesus, not a bishop, not a reverend, not a pastor, not an evangelist. Sends greetings. Who is he? He is always wrestling in prayer for you. That you may stand firm in all the will of God, matured and fully assured. In other words, Epaphras was an intercessor who provides spiritual authority and covering. A guardian, the person who may not necessarily be the biological father or mother of the child. And that was what Eli was to Samuel. In 1 Samuel 3 verse number 9, if you are still here, say amen. amen. So Eli told Samuel, go, what? And lie down. If he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. See how a mighty prophet was groomed by a man of God who taught him how to hear God, how to respond to God. He wasn't the biological father of Samuel, but God put him in a position to provide spiritual, to be a spiritual authority and provide a spiritual covering. Child of God, there are people who may not be your biological children, but God has put you in a place to be the one to guide them spiritually, to be the one to pray for them, to be the one, are you still here? Let me tell you this. Last Wednesday while I was with the children, I'll pray for a particular child. Praise the Lord. As I will lay my hand on the child, the Lord said, speak this over him. Lift up your two hands. Your children, Calabo, they will not be a repeat of your misfortune. They will not be a, meet, a repeat of your mistakes. Any evil, any error plotting the destruction of your children, God will guide you. God will help you. God will instruct you. God will grant you grace to be an intercessor. Amen. Can you say a good amen? amen? Who provides spiritual authority and covering? A spouse. Someone say a spouse. That means either a wife or a husband. You can become a spiritual authority as a wife in your home. And provide spiritual covering over your husband. Then as a, as a wife or as a husband, you can be a spiritual authority and a covering over your wife. It's pari parcel. It's like both sides of the coin. Your husband is going to work. It's not that you stay in front of a mirror and spend 30 minutes doing makeup. There's nothing wrong with that. But as a wife, you must know that praying for your spouse is also praying for yourself. Am I communicating? If you are spiritually sensitive, there are times God will tell you, your husband is on his way right now and something is about to happen. Go into your closet and pray. I told you, and I'm sure some of you are aware of it, some years ago, a governor had a plane crash and died. The only cry the wife was crying is that I would have prayed with him before he left. Who knows? Maybe God may have told her. She may have been carried away with other things. Can I tell you what destroys people's spirituality? Busy. Somebody say busy. I'm very busy. You know when I see people say, I'm very busy in the nature of my work, I know they have lost it. The Bible says, except a man build a house, the laborer that built a built in vain. No matter how busy you are, if God is not first in your life, forget every other thing you are pursuing. Forget every other thing you are pursuing. You may pursue them and pursue them and you will not get them. But when you put God first, the Bible says every other thing will be added to you. One thing that offends the life, the, the spiritual life of many believers is busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm sure the woman, God may have said, go and pray. He said, I pray yesterday. Listen, you cannot be wiser than God. The Bible said, as men that are led by the Spirit of God, who are they? They are the sons of God. It was God who spoke to Joseph. And Joseph knew what to do. And a tragedy was averted. 
Pray for your spouse. We saw how Isaac in Genesis 25, verse number 21. Read with me. What did he say? Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife. On behalf of who? A mature believer. A mature child of God. Your wife is going through things. It's not for you to say, this is not what I bargained for. This is not what I... Child of God, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. For those of you who are not married, your choice of who you marry should be based on their relationship with who? With God. When you see a man that has a relationship with God, I'm not talking about who, who, who at church. I'm not saying actors or actresses. If you find a man who has a relationship with God, all that things will fall in place. Am I communicating? You see a woman who has a relationship with God, all that things will fall in place. Blessed are you, man, if you have a wife who can fall on her knees to uphold you in prayer instead of narrating you and telling every dick and Harry how bad you are. Blessed are you, daughter of Zion, when your husband is Isaac and he can be on his knees and pray for you. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. He didn't go to the family and tell the family, I don't know what is happening. It's not my fault. In my family, we don't have delay. I don't know where this delay is coming from. No! Isaac knew that it's my duty to be a spiritual authority and a spirit covering over the wife. Why would the wife not honor him? And the Bible said, when he prayed, what happened? The Lord answered his prayer. And his wife, who? Rebecca, became pregnant. As a spouse, as a wife, as a husband, you can provide spiritual, you can be a spiritual authority and a covering. You don't need a title. I told a woman, I say in your home, you are the one God recognizes. Am I communicating? Anyone who is a spiritual authority and covering is the one God will deal with spiritually. Maritally, you the man, you are the head. But spiritually, a woman who knows her place and take her place of spiritual authority and covering is the one God will be dealing with. Am I communicating? So maritally, a man can be the head. Spiritually, a woman can be the head. Am I communicating? Who provides spiritual covering? Someone who occupies a position of leadership. Someone who occupies a position of what? Of leadership. When you occupy the position of leadership, you own it as a duty, not just to tell the people the work they should do. You also own them the place of spiritual covering because you are a spiritual authority over them. In Luke 22, 31 to 32, if you are still here, say amen. This Jesus speaking to Simon, one of his disciples, he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have been restored, threaten your brothers also. This is the role of a spiritual authority. Satan wants to snatch you away, Simon. But I have taken the matter to God. I have prayed for you. When you have been restored back, please help others also. In other words, pray for others also. If you run an organization and you don't pray for the people who work with you in the organization, you are in trouble. That's why white CEOs, what they do, spiritual ones, they fast, they pray, they spend time with their people. I, I've been to an organization, there was a particular bank, somebody said they went there and he was surprised that they were having a money devotion. A bank. That leader, that manager over that co company is a wise person. Because when you do that, if there is any evil person in that organization, they cannot thrive. Am I talking to the right people? They cannot thrive. But a leader or a CEO of an organization who is spiritually dead will just leave things to chance. And then the organization cannot grow. People there cannot grow. You find out that your best hands will just be dying. Your best hands will just be living. And the reason is because someone has passed a decree that that organization will not do well. Lift up your two hands above your head. I pray for someone who heads an organization or you have a vision to own one someday. I declare that God will give you the grace to provide spiritual leadership and covering in Jesus' name. How to provide spiritual authority and covering? One, true godly living. You cannot be a spiritual authority over your family, over your spouse, over your children when you practice iniquity. God will honor you. Evil demons, evil authorities will honor you. So by true, by godly living, walking in the fear of God, you become a spiritual enigma. You become someone that even the devil will say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Because there are people who are of light. There are people who are strong in the Lord. Psalm 112 verse number 1 to 4 says, 
praise the Lord. Blessed are those who what? Well, I wish you read with me. Who find great delight in his commands? What happened? Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. What will cause the children of the man who fear the Lord to be mighty? Because the man who fears the Lord is a spiritual authority and a covering over his household. He said, his children will not be mean. His children will not be miserable. His children will not be insane. His children will not be wayward. Can you say amen? When you have this understanding, nobody will tell you to walk in the fear of God. And then we are not done. Verse number three. What will be in the house of this man who is a spiritual authority and spiritual recovery? What will be in his house? Wet and riches in their houses. What happened? And their righteousness endures forever. Verse number four. Evil in darkness. What happened? Light dawns for the upright. For those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. When a man fears God, you provide a spiritual covering. Because you become a spiritual authority over your children. But when you cheat and cheat and commit adultery here, practice all kinds of evil, you can't be a spiritual authority. And at that point, you cannot guide your house. An evil man will come and carry your possessions. Are you still here? And take them away. Because it's only by working with God that you possess the authority and you can provide a covering over your family. Blesses the man who fears the Lord. Who finds great delight in his command. This man because he fears the Lord and he trembles and honors the word of God. Ah, he still shall be mighty upon the earth. And this same man, what will be in his house is not problem. It's not sickness. It's not shame. It's not lack. What will be in his house is what? It's wet and riches. And this man, he will not just live and be cut short. His righteousness, his legacy, his legacy, his legacy, his legacy, his legacy, his legacy, we endure. When men are saying there is too much darkness, this man will be enjoying light. Why? Because he's a man who walks in the fear of God. Listen to me. Secret sins will haunt you like a ghost. You are the only one running because you are the only one that can see it. You are the only one living in perpetual fear. Nobody is seeing it. The Bible says the wicked flee when no man pursued. If you are going to be a spiritual authority and provide spiritual covering, you must learn to walk in the fear of God. Can you say amen? Two, who provides spiritual or how to provide spiritual ability, uh, spiritual authority and covering through the ability of spiritual perception and instructions. If you are going to provide spiritual, you are going to be spiritual authority and provide spiritual covering, you must be someone who can hear God. Who can what? You can perceive spiritual things. Habakkuk 2 verse number 1. I'm going to be a bit fast. He said, I will stand like a guard. Someone shout that. I'm only hearing some few of you. And what? And watch. I will watch over my family. I will watch over my wife. You know, I heard the story of a man. He was somewhere sleeping. And they heard a voice. Call home now. Do what? Call home, call home, call home. After he had prayed. And he picked up his phone and called. The phone rang, rang. Nobody picked. And call a neighbor. That's why it's good you have good neighborliness. And the neighbor picked. And he said, I'm be calling my wife. My wife is not picking. Please. I know it's late, but can you, as the man was still talking, he looked across the window and saw fire on the house. He couldn't even finish the conversation, just scream! That's how they came. The whole neighborhood put the fire off. The wife and the children were in their room, sleeping, not knowing what was going on. How did the man know? I will stand, are you following? Like a guard and watch. I can perceive things. If he was in one hotel with the secretary, he won't know that. You can't be watching over your home on top of another woman. Because that is your grave. Praise the Lord Jesus. I will stand like a guard and watch. He said, I will wait to see what the Lord will say to me. I'm going to, because in a watch tower, you see things before they come. Am I right? You know, I remember one time I went to a very, you know, took a, you know, I live it, I went to a very tall building and I could see all the other houses. I could, you see, when you are a man who can perceive things spiritually, before Herod will come and attack Joseph and his family, God has shown him. Lift up your two hands. I'm sure you are ready for it. From today, your spiritual a a perception is activated in Jesus' name. Yeah. I will wait to see what he will say to me. I will wait and learn. 
how you will answer my question. How was Isaac able to provide spiritual authority and recovery over his family? In Genesis 24, verse number 63, he was always going to the feed every evening to what? To meditate. That was how he saw his wife. He said he went out to the feed one evening to meditate. Isaac was a man of deep meditation. He spent quality time with God. And at that point, as, and as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. What was the camel bringing? His wife. It was on the place of meditation he made a choice of who to marry. Are you surprised that his wife was a blessing to him? Was a wife surprised that the husband could go on his knees and pray and ask God, bless my wife. Lift up your two ways. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is my prayer for you. May God give you the grace that we enable you to be, to be, to be able to perceive things spiritually in Jesus' name. Amen. How to provide spiritual authority or to be a spiritual authority and provide spiritual covering, uh, covering through the teachings of God's word. You must be ready to teach the people, teach them God's word, teach them the knowledge of the word. Jeremiah 3 verse number 15 says, I will give you what? Pastors according to my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and what and understanding are you still there how do you provide spiritual uh, uh, authority and covering through prayer and intersection through prayer and what and intersection you pray for your children you pray for your family you pray for your church you pray for the members you pray for your siblings you pray for them amen i said amen Kaloshab. i said amen makurab i said amen after the first service, someone came to tell me that a woman who was 106 years just passed on, whether yesterday or so. Some years ago, more, almost about 20 years ago or so, or thereabout, she was sick and she invited me and she was afraid. I just remember, the Holy Spirit just reminded me and I said to her, God will give you more 15 years. She passed on this last week at 116. 106, lift up your twins. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare this over you. And it's a prayer of intersection, nothing will cut you short. You will see your children marry before you. Kalabashanda balega do bashala, but you will not labor for another to eat the fruit of your labor. If you are going to provide spirit, if you are going to be a spiritual authority and covering, you must be someone who prays and you intercede for others. You spend time. You know, a man of God is not someone who be praying for himself. No, you intercede. God shows you things. Not too long ago, I was praying and I saw a beautiful brother. Him and his wife were driving, and a child ran in front of the vehicle, and the child died. And it was a major distraction. And I said, Lord, what is that? I said, pray for them. Should I tell them? He said, no. Just pray. Just stand on the gap and pray. Lift up your right hand. May distractions be far from you this year. First Samuel 12, verse number 23, as the Samuel said, moreover, as for me, what did he say? God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. I will not only pray for you, I will teach you that this way you are going, this is not the right way to go. How to partake of spiritual authority and covering is my last point. How do I partake of it? Because you can be part of a church, you can be part of a spiritual organization, and you are not enjoying that grace, or the grace may have worked for you at a particular time, and after a while you fell out of that grace. Is it possible? Yes! Very possible! The grace that brought King Saul to the throne left him and he became a vagabond and he lost his throne. You will not be King Saul. Amen. You will not lose your place. Amen. You will not lose your favor. Amen. You will not lose your honor. Uh, if I've ever prayed for you and it worked for you, I'm going to declare it. You will not lose your grace. Amen. You will not lose your place. Karababa, you will not lose your crown. Karaba, Shadaba, you will not lose your honor. Amen. You will not lose your favor. How do I partake of a spiritual authority and covering? One, recognize, believe, and reverence spiritual authority. You can't despise spiritual authority. Amen? I don't have anything with you admiring, talking about other men of God. There are many men of God that are doing well. I, I celebrate them, I honor them. But may I ask you this question? Have you ever celebrated your man of God? Have you ever posted your man of God message? Have you ever posted your man of God quotes? His own is not good enough. Yet he prays for you. Intercedes for you. He stands on the gap for you. He sees things for you. 
He prays for you from the altar of God. So that when the evil ones are gathered on their altar and they see anything, shall not stand. Yet, you don't recognize, you don't believe, and you don't honor him. In the book of 2 Chronicles 20 verse number 20, he said, are you following? He said, and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tikal. And as they went forth, Joshua stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. What they said to them? Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. What happened? Believe his prophet, so shall ye prosper. Are you surprised you are part of an organization? You are part of a spiritual authority and covering? And the thing seems not to be working as it should be. Lift up your two Today, I declare restoration for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans 13 verse 1 to 2 says, Let everyone be subject to what? To the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has what? Established. He said the authorities that exist has been established by who? Two. Consequently, what did he say? Whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against who? Against what God has instituted. And those who do so, what will happen? I mean, forget it. Everybody is a man of God. I am mean, a man of God too. That is how rebels talk. That is how rebels talk. Imagine someone say, my father, forget it. Is it the first? The Bible say, back out to a man who says, who are you to my father or to his father? As you have biological fathers, you have spiritual fathers. Imagine David, look at somewhere and say, who do you think you are? <laughs> that was what happened to Saul and Saul lost his place. Imagine if the king of Israel had despised Elisha because he was the one sitting on the throne. The king of Aramis would have killed him. Lift up your two I pray for someone here. No more miscarriage for someone. Nothing that is valuable to you, you will lose anymore. I declare that no more destiny miscarriage. No more business miscarriage. No more marital miscarriage. If your image is stronger, you will be the first recipient in Jesus' name. Honor spiritual authority. He said, if you rebel against that authority, you are rebelling against who? Against God. I know more than, what, what do they know? Child of God, a spiritual authority is not there because of what they know. It's because of the choice, because of the grace of God. Can you say amen? amen. How to partake of spiritual authority and covering? Obedience to God's leading and instruction. Obedience to God's leading and instruction. I know some of you are tired already, but please just bear with me and we'll soon be done. John 10, 27 to 28. What did he say? My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. As an under shepherd, under the chief shepherd, there, there, there are people who are sheep. You talk to them, you talk, after a while you leave them to God. Because there's nothing you can do. Because they have their mind made up. All you need to do is to intercede that God touch their heart. He said, I know my sheep, my sheep know me. They hear my voice and they follow me. The voice of the stranger they will not follow. And because they know me and they obey my voice, no one will snatch them out of my hands. We have a few months to go and we'll step into 2022. Can I pray this for you and your heart so that stand as an authority over this place? Nothing will snatch you away before your time. Three, how to partake of spiritual authority, how to partake of spiritual authority and covering, humility of heart and deeds, humility of heart and deeds, you cannot be a proud person and partake of the grace of spiritual authority and covering why, James 4 verse number 6 the King James Version, he said but he give it more grace, open your hand like this, more grace for you this season, more grace for you this year the word more grace implies that grace are in dimensions grace are in levels so God gives one grace and then more grace and much grace. So he gave it more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud but gave it grace unto the humble. You get to a point you can't go forward. You get to a point in your career, nothing is going forward anymore. You may not know that the reason why you became like somebody who is stagnated is because of the pride of the heart. The Bible says when Amaziah became a king, his heart became proud and his pride led to his downfall. 
The Bible said, there, a pride goes before a fall. You want to partake of grace? You must humble yourself. The higher God takes you, the, he's examining to check your heart. Is your heart now hardy? Have you become so sophisticated that you can't listen to anybody again? Before the job came, before the contract came, before the breakthrough came, you were a humble person. When the breakthrough came, you changed. And God said, I'm going to resist you. I only give more grace to the humble. Receive the grace for humility before God in Jesus' name. In Philippians 1 verse number 7, I'm almost done. Even as it meets for me to think this of you, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bones and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. Every minister of God carries grace. And the grace God gives is a unique grace. Lift up your hand. May you partake of the grace of wisdom. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That seems to be sluggish a little bit. But can I pray that again? May you partake of the grace of wisdom. Yeah. May you partake of the grace to we, that we give you an excellent result in the midst of opposition. Yeah. Apostle Paul said, you are partakers of the grace of God upon my life. So you enjoy grace that God has given to me. How to partake of that grace? Partake of spiritual authority and spiritual covering. Stand in defense and intersection for godly spiritual authority. Let me repeat that if you heard what I said. Imagine I am somewhere, someone will open his mouth and say, Bishop Sancio Kelezo, that man is a very, is a fake man. You can't dare it. You can't dare it. Nobody sits in a place and somebody is insulting your father or your mother and you are quiet. You must be an idiot to do that. Is that true? A father who brought you to this world. Parents who stood by you. For me, I, don't, I have not seen anyone who can do that. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know that I can do what I do today. Someone introduced me to the bishop one day. And I sat before him. Because of me, he left home and came to the church. And he looked at me and began to prophesy over me. And said, God is going to use you. I didn't know. I have relatives who are ministers of God. They didn't see it. This man saw it prayed for me, began to provide spiritual mentorship. I began to grow, only for me to now grow and have more anointing, amen, than him. And then I will sit in a place, somebody will open his mouth and talk about my bishop. I will fight you, but I will silence you. When anyone attack your man of God, they're actually attacking you spiritually. You are running your mouth. Listen to this. No man of God is perfect. Every man of God is God's choice. And is accountable to God. I love David. King Saul was misbehaving. <laughs> and the, his servant, the servant of David said, we have a body to kill him now. Ah. <laughs> David said, me? Touch the Lord's servant? In fact, they made David to cut the edge of his uh, garment. The Bible says his heart was stricken. He was repenting for cutting the edge of the servant of the garment of the man of God. There are some, they don't cut the garment. They cut his throat with their tongue. With your tongue. You carry anger in your heart. Whenever the devil wants to strike you, there are three things he will do. One of them is to lure you into sin. Lure you into what? He will tell you it doesn't matter. That's what he told Eve. It doesn't matter. Do it now. Everybody's eating it. What's your problem? I bet eat, John, and then let us do. One. The second trap, he will allow bitterness. Offenses. He will create an offense in your heart so that that was how he attacked John the Baptist. Jesus heard that John the Baptist was in prison. In fact, they actually sent a message to Jesus. And Jesus didn't go. And then because he felt disappointed that Jesus didn't come, he sent another message. The same John the Baptist who said, Behold the Lamb of God that take out the sins of the world. He changed his mouth. He said, go and ask him. Is it the one to come? Or should we expect another? When an offense is in your heart, you can't, you can't behave normally. The things you said was good, you will say it's evil. Am I communicating? You watch against your friends. The thing the devil will do is to attack your relationship with spiritual authority. Am I communicating? To separate you. I told them in first service. I'm, some of you are aware of that. You know, some of you may not know, but for those of us who grew up in the village, this native fowl, called the fowl, some of you call it birds, but we call it fowl. And the mother fowl, the native mother fowl, they have a way of hatching their eggs. Am I right? And they, nobody gives them uh, hybrid feed. No, they have their own feed where they get their feed from. And when they are taking their hybrid food from the dustbin, they have a way of using, you remember? Yes, sir. Don't look at me like you came from New York. You were born here. 
They have a wolf doing their leg like this, and their children will come and eat. And you know one thing about the mother fowl? The mother fowl is something is spiritual. Uh, is it spiritual sensitivity or natural sensitivity? I don't know. But it has the ability to detect things. Am I communicating? When the mother fowl is doing like this, and it senses that there is a hawk around, you will make one noise. I don't know the noise. Kruk, kruk. The children will say an alert. And then when you make another, all the children will run and hide under the mother fowl, and they will cover them with their wings. But among the children that the mother fowl hatched, there are some that are idiot. Are we together? They are very stubborn. Are you still here? Are you still with me? They love the food. Quack, quack, quack. The mother says, yeah, yeah. They will respond. They are the ones that the hawk will come. <laughs> Takes it off. That is how it is spiritually. That is how it is spiritually. God is saying, blow the trumpet. Tell my people. God will never give it. This wasn't the message I prepared. The message I prepare is how to develop spiritual ability. Last night, God said, no. That's not my thought for my people. Preach this. Why will he give me this message? There is somebody he's talking to. But you'll be surprised. As he's talking, now the person is sleeping. Meanwhile, you are the one God is speaking to. The hawk is around. Danger is looming. Something is about to go wrong. The mother hen is saying, quack, 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 quack. the baby is saying, what is wrong with my mommy? Why are you making noise? Until the hawk. The hawk cannot carry the mother hen. But the hawk can carry the baby hen. But the mother hen provides spiritual covering. Are you a stubborn baby <laughs> fowl? I don't know what it is. You start a defense of your man of God. He may not be a perfect man. You know, some one time ago, something happened to a man of God that they were talking and I said, go and sit down. Every man of God is a suspect. Every man of God. Any man of God that is doing well is a thief. And some of you, I saw some of your posts. You will post some people who are speaking from demonic perspective. And you will repost them. And when I saw them, I knew that you need my prayer. Amen. Because people, listen to me, people speak from their viewpoint. Am I right? Yes, people speak from their viewpoint. Those in darkness will speak the principles of darkness. Those of light will speak the principles of light. Am I communicating? People we call Facebook, the next is to be attacking them. The Lord told me, say, don't join that gang. There are people who are misbehaving. God will judge them. Am I communicating? Yeah. For you to turn and say, hello, hello, my followers. I just want to say what happened today. Nowadays, the way things are going, the body of Christ, do you know the body of Christ? Who made you the judge of the body of Christ? You serve your God. God is an unknowing God. Am I communicating? And as they are busy, they do say, Something I went to a church, this way, and then you watch it. Say, not true, not true, not true. You will repost to advertise people castigating, saying all manner of things against ministers of God. Lift up your right. I pray that you will stand in defense of the truth. Amen. You will stand with light. Amen. Can you say it better? Amen? amen. First Corinthians 16, verse number 9. It said, Because a great door for effective work has been opened to me, what happened? There are many who oppose me. There are many that will oppose the minister of God. Oppose the man of God. Like I said, no man of God will say I am a perfect being. No. Jesus said there is only one that is one that is perfect. But you know, for you to pay the price to humble yourself before God, stay in his presence to hear him, is not a joke. It's not a joke. One day my wife said to me, you would have been a reverend father. And I said, I didn't know on time. You know what that implies? Yet these same ministers of God, you see, don't speak about things you don't know or things you don't understand. Be patient. Time will prove things right or what? Or wrong. He said, great door is open to me in ministry. Many are opposing me today. I'm not here to speak in defense of anybody. But I can tell you there are men of God that have helped this country. True of us. So many years ago, there was a place that was found in Koma Hill. How many of you are in Koma Hill, be whatever Hill? You know, in, in Adamawa. The first people to respond to the needs of people who were still living in this, in this century naked was the church. Churches are building schools. He said the money is too high. They didn't force you. There are cheap ones. You can go. Churches if not for the church, Nigeria would have been destroyed. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. How? How do I know? When you come to church, you hear the word of God. If we were terrorists, you've never died since. If we were preaching, go and blow up yourself. Will you still be alive? 
When you come to church, you hear the good news. You hear the wisdom of God. It blesses you. Come on, lift up your right hand and say, I will defend the truth in Christ. Stand in defense of the truth. Some are passive. And some of them, what you will hear is that, I don't know which man of God is real. I just serve my God. Listen to this. You are not serving the man of God. You are serving the living God. But God will use a man to impact your life. Lay your two hands on your head. I declare in the name of Jesus, your head will not lack spiritual authority. Run their mouth. Because a great door for effective work has been opened to me. There are many who oppose me. Stretch your hand towards me. And declare this, Lord. Mm, say it well. Help your servant. To stand firm. And do your will. At all times. Every attack of the devil. Against his life. And ministry. I stand as an intercessor. And I decree, it shall not prosper. If you mean what you said, I said amen to it in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians 6, verse number 19, Apostle Paul said, Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words might be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the misery of the gospel. This is what mature believers do. They fall on their knees every service day. They pray for their pastor. They pray for the ministers. They pray for the church service. If you can be praying for your pastor, before you will come to church, God will already give you an insight. And when you come to church, you can flow with him because you are in the same page spiritually. Not running your mouth, condemning. Make sure you stand in defense and intersection for ministers of God. Five, be a blessing to a spiritual authority and spiritual covering. Can you repeat that? Be a blessing. It's my last point and I will allow you to go. And I believe that today, a new thing has happened to you spiritually that you will no longer be a spiritual orphan. When the enemy shall come against you like a mighty flood, grace will speak for you. Be a blessing. First Corinthians 9, verse number 11. Apostle Paul here speaking. He said, if we have some spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a material harvest from you? In other words, we have impacted you spiritually. Will it be too much if you bless us with material things? Will it be too much? We have impacted you spiritually. Will it be out of place if you bless us materially? You want to enjoy spiritual covering? You want to be part of spiritual authority? Learn to bless servants of God. Learn to bless your man of God. Not because he's a beggar, but because he's a principle. Let me show you the last scripture, and I'll be done. Galatians 6, verse number 6. It is easy to read version. We give us a better understanding. Please read it loud, and this is our last point. What, what did he say? You, I know you can read better than that, so take it all over again. Want to go? Whoever should share the good things they have with the one who is teaching them. As you have been imparted, as you be taught wisdom, as you be counseled, it says share the good things that is the benefit of what you have been taught, been taught with the one who is teaching you. It's the word of God I have preached. You want to be a partaker of spiritual authority? You want the man of God to pray for you and grace will flow? You want the church authority and grace to flow to you and you begin to experience the handwork of God, the hand of God? Be a blessing. Be a blessing. Be a blessing doesn't mean you necessarily give them money. I, tell you, I told them in full service, make sure you help carry their burdens. Make sure you step in and play a role in their lives and ministry. Things that will lighten their ministry. Things that will lighten the burden they carry as a ministry. Pastor, I, 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 I'm going to take care of this. Pastor, you don't need to bother yourself about it. This matter, leave it for me. You are being a blessing to the spiritual authority that provide spiritual covering. My prayer for you is that the Lord who gave this word, what he has ordained to do with this word, we have in faith in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not be exposed. Amen. You will not be vulnerable. Amen. Come on, I'm praying for you. If you will say amen, your children will not be vulnerable. Amen. You will come under the wings of the Almighty. Amen. Your life and your children's life will be protected. Amen. Will be preserved from evil. Amen. No evil one will snatch you out of life. No evil power will snatch your children out of life. Your destiny will not be corrupted. I wish I can hear why amen I'm waiting to hear. Amen. Joseph, get up! Rise! Take your wife and the child. For Herod is coming to seek the child, to kill the child. Lift up your two hands. I declare in the name of Jesus, whoever is seeking your downfall will seek it in vain. Amen. God will keep you. Amen. God will preserve you. You will not lack spiritual covering. 
when the enemy shall rise up against you like a mighty flood the spirit of the lord will lift up a standard against them the lord will be with you the lord will be with your family the lord will protect your family the lord will watch over you and today i pray for you if you will receive it receive the grace to be a spiritual authority and covering over your family over your spouse over your children over your career over your organization in the name of jesus every form of spiritual lukewarmness spiritual heaviness i rebuke in jesus name in jesus name i pray thank you for listening